In this video, I'm going to show you how I went about making this cool Helldivers 2 cinematic with relative ease so that you can too. Let's waste no time and get right into it. It's safe to say that Helldivers 2 is really fun. There's multiple now. There's definitely multiple. He's not even killing me. Oh my god. <laughs> You're dead. Oh my. Also safe to say that it looks gorgeous. Let's take a closer look at that visual magic and then let's dive in and create something cool in Blender. This desert landscape right here is my reference. Now it's actually quite interesting to break down the composition of game screenshots because it's not like everything was placed here with full intention by an artist. We've got our kind of usual rule of third split. Obviously this is very roughly proportioned but we can note this generalization that having stuff in this area of the screen is good. These cliffs here also create a very nice valley effect which leads into the bright sun and also the incidental bug. We want to create the same sort of misty fall off in our render to give it a sense of scale and like this very expansive desert. Now we're going to also note that there are a large number of creatures. We're going to kind of want to create the impression at least of there being a lot of monsters. So that's one more thing to note. More importantly, this is a desert. Our colors are very orangey, hazy, dusty with blacks mixed in. We've got sand here mixed in with desert rock and very nice canyon desert cliffs. Also got a lot of particles flying. There's an explosion going on right now, so that's going to contribute a lot to it. Now, I think we've squeezed most of what we can out of this. You don't want to just stare at a reference image until your eyes fall out. So let's go on to the interesting stuff now. Originally, I did use some Starship Trooper models for my render, but that and a combination of where my art piece was in general at the time really didn't nail that Helldivers to aesthetic. Luckily, I found a much better alternative, which I'll get into soon in the video. Our first step within Blender is to block out the shape of the environment. Now you may be thinking, man, this game environment looks so realistic and so detailed. How the hell can I model something this realistic? Photo scans. Oh yes, you heard me right. And oh no, this isn't going to completely kill your PC, though it may suffer slightly. So basically, with photogrammetry or photo scanning, we construct a 3D model through lots and lots of individual photos taken of a real object. Now what does this mean, you ask? Realism. And also, uh, help. Performance. Now, if you have an Epic Games account, you can get a free license to use photo scans from Quixel Bridge. Essentially, you can use professional, Unreal Engine photo scan assets inside of Blender. Websites like Sketchfab do offer a lot of good photo scans, so you can always look there as an alternative. Now, I'm just going to keep things simple and grab two photo scans to import into Blender to build our desert landscape. If you download a couple of really good versatile models, you can place them around with different rotations and scales and get away with a lot of duplication. Hot tip, instancing is your friend here. Instead of duplicating stuff, instance it with Alt-D instead of Shift-D. This will save you a lot of viewport and render performance. Both of our models have 8K texture sets because they're going to be up close and we want a lot of granular detail. A further reason for the 8K is that we can leverage this quality for creating displacement maps. And we can actually displace our geometry with the use of the texture. The lighting looks really good when there's actual pebbles sticking up out of the ground physically. Something else easy that we can do is to just crunch the roughness values. You can see the texture with some crushing maybe looks a little bit less washed out or plasticky. You get some shine on it, looks like it's slightly wet. Now, a big thing which you are probably wondering about. The actual Helldivers models. Well, there's this great Discord server called the Helldivers Archive, where some powerful soldiers are Helldiving for assets in the game files, so to speak. This leaves us with some absolutely sick models. We've got a really cool looking Helldiver. We've got a mech with amazing inverse kinematics and multiple weapons. We've got three different, unique, scary looking alien models. We've got a Hellpod, and we've got a Liberator Assault Rifle. And I was especially happy with the textures for the alien. However, I did end up making custom bump mapping for the metallic textures on the likes of the mech and the Hellpod just to make things look a bit grungy and like they'd actually be on the planet's surface for a few minutes. Now that we have all the models in place, let's wrap up by looking at the scene arrangement, composition, posing, animation, and post-processing element. I'll do my best to show you good steps to take here, but with all of the setup and basic scene construction out of the way, this is where a mixture of not only defined rules, but also your own creativity should shine. You can see how I made the decision to fill up this part of the frame for most of the animation with this mech. I think that this really helps to drag your eyes over to the big monstie, which is coming right at our main guy. Monsty is center frame, which is very simple composition rule. You kind of end up looking at him. As soon as this mech goes out of focus, especially because I use a depth of field thing so that I switch focus over to the alien, you can see this happening inside of Blender. This object here represents our depth of field plane, and you can see throughout the animation we switch first to the Helldiver, and then afterwards it moves over to the creature because initially our mech is really in focus right here and then we pull focus from it as the mech also simultaneously moves out of the frame and if we get focus on the large movements of the big monster in front the subtle placement of the escape pod is just on an angle to sort of frame this guy in this little v-shape i think that that really helps to highlight him in general angling stuff towards the center of your frame is a nice way to sort of like treat your viewer's eye like water and just have it flowing into the center because that's where naturally a lot of stuff's happening. You can see by the end of this animation we have this nice triangle of three different alien creatures, this guy right in the center of them. And you'll also notice that the barrel of the gun 
slowly, slowly moves towards this guy's head, which just makes sense from a narrative perspective, but I guess you could also say that it maybe serves an extra sort of purpose as leading the viewer's eyes towards the monster again. To be honest, you could go on about this compositional stuff for hours, but really I'd say that this is fairly simple overall in execution, but fairly effective. The main thing is that it just looks quite pretty. The particles are definitely partially responsible. You can see that I've also added halation. This adds a nice haze or orange glow effect to the edge of objects which you often see in film, something which I discovered recently and I've fallen in love with it. And in general, I'm just flicking back and forth between this and the reference image to try and match the colours there. You can see we bring up much harsher blacks, much stronger oranges, much stronger yellows, everything just looks way bolder and clearer. Our shadows go slightly purpley or magenta, and our highlights are definitely very bright yellow, orange. I added some very subtle on-screen effects as well. A little dust overlay. You can see we also added some on-screen lens particles which helped to add to this sunny atmosphere. Now slow motion was partially a creative decision and also partially a time-saving decision. Animating stuff in slow motion you can get away with a bit more because stuff sticks out less badly when you get it wrong in slow motion and you also just have to animate less movement in general. But yeah, you can see how the poses of both the mech and the guy are drawing your attention in a certain place while also fitting with the narrative. You can definitely use posing to this effect, in the same way that this guy's sort of like poised, his head's exposed, and I get him to sort of turn his head down like he's about to charge as well, mouth opening up. It's all a very inviting and sort of eye-catching pose. The lighting's also fairly simple in this. I always pretty much go for backlighting in my scenes. You can see that this backlighting sort of gives all of these really nice highlights to this guy. You can even see it with an Eevee, but you can see that's how we're getting all of this really, really sharp glow around the guy. Apart from that, this light off to the side is also pretty important. You can see we're going for fairly natural and warm yellow light because I tried having cool mechanical looking lights and I just felt like it was a bit too distracting. Now aside from the skybox, the final light here is this second backlight. It gives us a secondary light on the pod, but most importantly, it really frames and gives that same rim light edging to all of the creatures, except for of course this big guy at the back, but he's mainly meant to be a silhouette more than anything. You can see furthermore we do have this very very low sun. These are my sky texture settings, they're quite basic and they're honestly set quite low because I didn't want to wash things out too much. Now that it's done, enjoy the final product. Even though I already spoiled it at the start of the video, because you know, it's a YouTube video. Thanks to the awesome team behind Helldivers and to the awesome people who Helldived for these juicy assets, and I hope that you enjoyed watching. Big shout out to my Ko-Fi supporters, Mittering and Cactus Morvaze. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Happy Helldiving. Goodbye.